Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> My name is Dan Scholes, and I am happy and privileged to serve as the 10th president of Cardinal Street. Actually, my 18th year here at Stretch, and I am so happy that we are able to resume an ecumenical prayer service such as this in honor of Christian unity. We are honored and privileged to host today's service as the week of Christian, Christian prayer for Christian unity concludes. I want to welcome our guests to our campus and thank them for representing nine different faith communities and organizations. If you look on the inside cover of your orders of worship, you will see um, the different faith traditions that are represented here today. Special thanks to Gino Gravetti, our Director of University Ministry, for his work to plan today's prayer service. Ecumenical dialogue is at the heart of our Catholic Franciscan identity. The 1964 Decree on Ecumenism, promulgated on November 21st, 1964, at our Second Vatican Council, encourages us to continue this ongoing dialogue with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Quote, all the faithful should remember that the more effort to live holier lives according to the gospel, the better will they further Christian unity and put it into practice. For the closer their union with the Father, the Word, and the Spirit, the more deeply and easily will they be able to grow in mutual love. The Sisters of St. Francis of Assisi, our founders and sponsors, have long been committed to ecumenical dialogue. We are fortunate to be joined today by Sister Mary Lee Schneider, who served as Stritch's president from 1991 to 2008 and is a current faculty member and has led the ecumenical dialogue for many years. Our Stritch community is built around four Franciscan values, creating a caring community, showing compassion, making peace, and reverencing all of God's creation. Each year, one of the values is a focal point for all that we do on campus. This year's value is creating a caring community, and I can think of no better way to bring the value to life than hosting today's prayer service. The corrosive divisiveness that affects our cities, nation, and world is a cause for great concern. Turning our attention to all that we have in common and making a genuine commitment to ecumenism serves as a source of hope, peace, and joy. Seeking unity also helps us fulfill the will of Jesus Christ and helps lead to renewal collectively, collectively and individually. So please join us in the opening prayer and song, What Star Is This? Together we pray in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are united today with fellow believers in four corners of the world as we gather to pray for the visible unity of the church. We do this with worship resources prepared by the Middle East Council of Churches. Our texts are inspired by the visit of the Magi to the newborn king as described in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, we observed his star in the east and have come to pay him homage. Let us fix our eyes on the star that was seen in the east and allow it to lead us to peace. Find God's presence with thanksgiving and joy. 
bringing all the sick, the suffering, the marginalized, and the refugees, and the uprooted before him, knowing that God can dispel our darkness with his light. As we pray today for the unity of the church, may we in our communities also be light that guide others to Jesus the Savior. Glory be to you, Father Almighty, for you have revealed yourself through your creation and invited all people to stand in your presence. We have seen the star of Jesus in our lives and have come to worship him just as the Magi did. We offer him ourselves today and we ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit among us. Unite us with one another as we come from the north and from the south, from the east and from the west, old and young, men and women, to bow down before you and offer you homage, our heavenly King. Amen. We glorify you, O Lord, for you have set the lights in the vault of the sky. You separated light from darkness and arranged signs to mark sacred times and days and years. You studded the firmament with stars. How majestic are your works. The heavens declare your glory and the skies proclaim the work of your hands. We praise you. For you did not abandon us despite our rebellion, but sent your Son to brighten our darkness and be our light and our salvation. In him was life, and that life was the light of all humanity. The light shines in the darkness. We praise you, O Lord. We worship you, O Lord, for you accompany us in the chaos of our life. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, you light up our paths and give us wisdom and faith in a world of untruth and doubt. We worship you, O Lord. We thank you, O Lord, for you send us into the world to reflect this life around us in our various churches and diverse cultures and to witness to Jesus, the one true King, offering ourselves to him. We thank you, O Lord. May all the peoples bow before you and worship you. We have often preferred darkness, but you have given us light. Therefore, we come to you confessing our sins and saying together, We confess before you that we have turned away from your ways and disobeyed your ordinances. We have disfigured your good creation and have squandered its resources through our consumerist practices. We have polluted your rivers and seas and poisoned your air and soil and contributed to the extinction of many species. We have acted selfishly towards our brothers and sisters. We have allowed our own needs and desires to prevail over our commitment to justice. We have built walls between us and planted the seeds of distrust towards the other. We have obeyed our ethnicity. Religion and gender, and we acclaim Jesus on our side in any world we wish. We pray all these thoughts and deeds, O Lord, as we come before you in repentance. Now I sing perhaps what is the most ancient Christian hymn Jesus Christ crucified for us. While I'm singing it, I pray. Lord, bring us to unity under the shadow of his cross. Holy God, holy and almighty, holy 
be any mortal. You were crucified for us. Have mercy, holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal. You were crucified for us. Have mercy, so us so give us or so give on my or hatches of us O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of sage and infants, you have founded the whole earth because of the reports, the silence, the enemy, and the adventure. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established. What, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of their hands. You have put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen, and also beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O, o Lord, Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. First reading for today is a reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them light shine. Thou hast multiplied the nation. Thou hast increased its joy. They rejoice before thee as with joy at the harvest as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, thou hast broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the trampling warrior in the battle tomb and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Hymn of Light to Saint Ephraim. The light of the just and joy of the upright is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He got to know the Father. He manifested himself to us. He came to rescue us from darkness and to fill us 
with their agents of this power. Pain is dark upon us. The power of darkness is fading away. From the true light, there arises for us the light which illumines our darkened hearts. <laughs> His glory shines upon the world and enlightens the very depth of the abyss. Death is annihilated, night has vanished, and the gates of shale are broken. Creatures lying in darkness from ancient times are closed in light. The dead arise from the dust and sink before they have a savior. He brings salvation and grant us life. He ascends to his father of heart. He will return in glorious splendor and shed his light on those gazing. A reading from Ephesians. For once you were in the darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. The fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is a shame even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it is said, Wake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead. Christ shall give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Together, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. And when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born, king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship. Herod King heard this. He was troubled with all of Jerusalem. Assembling all the chief priests, scribes, and people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. He told him in Bethlehem, Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler. Will govern my people of Israel. Herod summoned wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship. They had heard the king went their way. Lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came to rest at the place where the child was. They saw the star. They rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Going into the house, they saw the child. 
carry his cover. They fell down and worshipped him. And opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. He warned in a dream not to return to Herod. They departed to their own country by another way. Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Eric Shemensky, the president of the University of Doctors, Reverend Fathers and Sisters and People of God. My name is Father Pierre Fouri. I'm from the Maronite Church, Maronite Church. And I'm privileged and honored to be here to pray with you for the unity of our church. And the theme is we saw his star in the east. And we came to worship. We call this feast in the Roman Church the Adoration of the Magi. There's a special word in Aramaic, which is the language of our church, the language spoken by Jesus, Syriac Aramaic. It's called Sujud. Say it with me. Sujud. Sujud is to worship, to adore, but it's never an action on the outside. As it comes from first in the instant. When you bow your soul and your, your being to this newborn king. And I think that's what we need today in our prayer for the unity of worship. To remember who we are worshiping and to remember why we are here, the reason why the church is here. To bow heart, soul, mind, power, everything in us, in body, to the Lord Jesus. And let him direct his church. Pope Francis, in meditating on this passage, he said, Worship is the end and goal of the journey. Once we lose the sense of worship, we lose our direction in the Christian life. In the Eastern churches, he said that the goal of our Christian life is theosis. And theosis is this union between man and God. When God came to us and men go to him and he, and the union between God and man, this divinization sent uh, Athanasius of Alexandria, he said, Jesus was made man, so man become. Oh, so man become in the divinity, enter the divinity. God is reaching to us, and we need to reach back to him. And I think in our prayer for unity is a little attempt to reach to God and to ask him for forgiveness and to ask him to help us to reach this unity. Because we cannot do it as a human. It's impossible to do it as a human. Only God can do it. There's a few words today I want to share with you in Aramaic Syria, which is the philosophy cannot explain. Only the Bible, the scripture, the word of God, the Holy Spirit, and uh, uh, the spirituality of, of, of Christ that can explain those words. The first word is Arzo. Arzo. Arzo, Arzo is used in the Western Church, the word sacrament. In the, in the Eastern Church, we use the word arzu, mysteries, mystery of the knowledge of God, mystery of the love of God, the mystery of the Church, the mystery of the seven sacraments, the mystery, even simple as to light a candle, to burn incense, to say a prayer, to bless the food. It's the mystery when God comes to meet us. And this mystery is came to us in the mystery of the Church. The Church is the extension of Jesus on the earth. Jesus' word will come to us in the church. How beautiful that God gave us the church to lead us, to lead us to the salvation. The church gave us the gospel. The church gave us Jesus. And now this church is 
under attack. And not just from the enemy, but also from us. Because we are divided. And this is not the church that speaks of the same God. If we, are, if we are one, there is one God. And the church should reflect the one God. Not many different gods. And that's why your language, your culture, your idea will not define the church. But God will define his church. God will move his church. And Lord Jesus Christ will be moved. And will be moved by the Holy Spirit. And this church crossed the same church from Jerusalem to Samaria to Syria to Lebanon to Turkey to Rome to USA in the same church. But yes, we respect our diversity. But God is the one who defines his church and who moves his church. We respect our diversity, but in our diversity, there is richness, and we need to respect our diversity and love our diversity, but not let our diversity separate us from each other. And that is, 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 is the most important thing about the church. And that's why here I want also to go back to the Eastern, Cameronite, Catholic spirituality. Saint Ephraim is well known. And we spoke, we, 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 we sang and we wrote, uh, we uh, recite his hymns of life. He said, Every time we get astray, there is one thing important to do humility. Humility. And he said, Humility is that Christ when he emptied himself, we also to empty ourselves from all power, all materialistic. Uh, desires, everything that separates us from each other, to be able to, to uh, uh, renew our spirit. Humility. And in this humility, he spoke of something very important. Makihuso. Makihuso. Makihuso is it to be newborn, to be born again. And how you can be born again? He said, we receive baptism when we are small. And there's a new baptism for each one. He has access to it. And this baptism is the water of your eyes and the tears of your eyes. When you go cry your sin and repent for your sin. What he who though is a renewal and repentance. When you repent, God will renew you. When you repent, God will give you the Holy Spirit to you. When you repent, God's salvation will reach against your heart and, and it will build you and it will help you to grow. It's very beautiful word. Maki Kuzo. Maki Kuzo. It's like to be renewed in, in repentance and conversion of your heart. And when the Holy Spirit will talk to you, only the Holy Spirit can lead you into this repentance. And the last word, I won't also he talk about it. It is higher. And this is the same word that used for Jesus, the only Son of God, the only Idihai, which is to be in one mind, one heart, and one will to achieve the, the holiness. To be in one mind, yet divided, but to be divided, or you say that singly, singly, or oneness, to be one with the Holy Spirit, to, to let the Holy Spirit. There is no double in your lifestyle. And only can you achieve this into the prayer of silence. And he defined the prayer of silence in three things. Silence of your body. From all the higher power and materialistic stuff. Silence of your heart. Silence of your heart. Again, from all the desire that will move you away from God. And the silence of your mind. Yes, it's a gift of the mind. But sometimes it becomes, especially in the, in the problem of the church, argument for the argument. So let us go back and today, together from all our heart, let the Holy Spirit pray in us. Pray in us. 
and to present us for Jesus Christ one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church based on the gospel and the teaching of the apostles and the spirit of Jesus Christ. He is the Lord, he is the master of this church, and we are to worship him because we have seen his star and we are looking for this new born king to worship from all our heart. Amen. I know my name is here for the Cree, Nicene Cree, but uh, it's counterintuitive for somebody to say it alone. So, would you all rise? <laughs> and we will say, we'll bring our hands to unity. We will say the Nicene Cree in unison. We believe in one God, the Father of all maker of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. Was entirely of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken it through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look at the resurrection of the dead. And the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Uh, friends, I invite you to be seated. Um, I'm delighted to see everybody uh, this evening that we can come together from our different, disparate lives in this common space of prayer. Um, and I wonder at that, and I bear wonder for what those prayers may be. Um, you'll notice this blue piece of cloth uh, lying in the center right here. Um, at the conclusion of the service, at the end, I invite you to track down, we have these paper stars. Um, I wonder if you might write your name on that star and write what prayer for ecumenism you might bear this evening and share it with us and pin it to that blue space this evening. A star led the Magi to Christ. Today, this star points to the presence of Christ who has been revealed to us and whose light shines on us. As the Magi followed the star to Bethlehem, we gather under this star today, adding our own stars to the sky, uniting our own gifts and prayers for the visible unity of church. We journey towards that goal. May our lives together give a luminous witness that leads others to know Christ. With faith and confidence, we come in prayer before God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Magi came from the East to pay homage and offer special gifts in their cultures and countries. We pray today for all Christian communities around the world in all their diversity of worship and tradition. Lord, we ask you to preserve these treasures, particularly in areas of the world where the presence and survival of Christians is threatened by violence and oppression. 
The early years of the Lord's life were marked by violence and massacres and the orders of the despot Herod. We pray for children living in places in the world where violence continues and where its results are tangible. Strengthen, O oh Lord, the bonds of unity and mutual love among our churches and help us to cooperate and witness to your holy name. Inspire us to work without ceasing in order to defend the oppressed and include the marginalized. Encourage us to stand together in the face of tyranny and oppressive regimes as we seek your kingdom among us. Lord, hear our prayer. After the visit of the Magi, the Holy Family experienced migration through the wilderness and became refugees in the land of Egypt. We pray for all the refugees and uprooted people of this world. Equip us, Lord, to show hospitality to those driven from their homes and grant us the spirit of welcome to those looking for a safe haven. Lord, hear our prayer. Birth of Jesus was good news for all gathering people from different nations and religions in worship of a holy child. We pray for our efforts to seek harmony and dialogue with other religions. Lord, give us humility and patience to walk with others and respect on their journey. Lord, Lord hear our The Magi returned to their home by a different we pray for our churches in this changing world. Lord, help us to find new and creative ways to follow you and to witness to you so that the world may believe. Lord, Lord. When the Magi saw the Holy Child, they rejoiced with great joy. Heavenly Father, fix our eyes on him so we do not lose our way. Unite us, Lord Jesus, who is the way, truth, life, taught us to pray. We stand, let us say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go now and live as children of light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good, right, and true. Take no part in the unfruitful work of darkness. Let us wait for sleep, and Christ will shine upon us. Peace be to the whole community, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all who have an undying love for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God.
Thank you all for coming to this beautiful ecumenical prayer service. Uh, it means so much to us here at Cardinal Stritch University uh, that you all came to celebrate with us. If you would, as a prayerful way to conclude our service, you'll find the stars in the baskets on the two red tables in the back of the church. Please consider writing a short prayer to conclude our time together. And thank you again for being here.